What's up Guardians? Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Crota's End returns this week, and if you intend on conquering this raid on day one, you'll need the best weapons and loadouts possible. So today we're breaking down the best weapons and subclass loadouts to use in each encounter, and everything else that you need to know to be ready when this returning raid launches. Crota's End was Destiny's second raid after the Vault of Glass. Not an overly long raid, but it was super fun and the rewards were amazing. And those same rewards are coming back, including those awesome neon lit armor sets. Crota's End will return in the same fashion as King's Fall. It will be free to all, but to access this raid, you will need to be at least 1790. Crota's End features four separate encounters. The Abyss, aka the Lamp Room, the Bridge, the Death Singers, and finally Crota. The first two encounters do not include any bosses. The Death Singer Iryut is technically a boss, but more of a mini boss, leaving Crota as the only true boss encounter that you'll have in this raid. You'll face all the typical hive enemies, Cursed Thrall, Acolytes, Wizards, Knights, Ogres, and Shriekers. You'll see more arc damage coming your way than anything, especially from Exploding Thrall, Knights, Wizards, and Crota but there will still be plenty of void damage from Acolyte Snipers, Shriekers, and Ogres, along with solar damage from Acolyte Grenades. So bear all this in mind when you're putting together your armor. There's only two types of shields that your enemies will be using. Knights will use Arc Shields, and Wizards will use Solar. Since there won't be any bosses to deal with in the first two encounters, you will be free to run an Add Clear style build. If you've been playing for the last few seasons, running a similar build as to what you would run during Ghost of the Deep or a Grandmaster Nightfall would suffice. The first encounter will force you to make your way through the Abyss, activating lamps along the way. While doing this, you will have Cursed Thrall and Normal Thrall chasing you. And before you escape this area, there will be Acolytes and Ogres that come in as well. This is where high rate of fire weapons like SMGs, auto rifles, and heavy machine guns will be very beneficial. Weapons with incandescent, bolt shot, destabilizing rounds, and other area effects will be the most beneficial since you'll be able to hit more targets at once. Demolitionist will also be a very beneficial weapon trait to be able to keep your grenade energy charged, and since you'll be surrounded by enemies the whole time, threat detector or surrounded will also be top tier weapon traits to have on your weapons. Fusion rifles and wave frame grenade launchers that include perks like chain reaction or reservoir burst will also come in handy. Since they do provide a frontal shield, you can utilize the benefits of a glaive to protect yourself from those thrall that are exploding. Since you'll be slowed and have enemies constantly chasing you, hunters will want to use either Tether or the Stasis, Silence, and Squall to help keep these enemies at bay. Roaming supers like Storm Trance or Hammers can be very helpful as well, and so can those Titan and Warlock Stasis supers. Shadebinder Warlocks in particular can utilize Stasis turrets as you're navigating through the maze. Since you will be slowed, the Strand Grapple or Arc Amplified abilities could help you run through this maze a lot faster. Once you get to the bridge, you'll encounter the equivalent of a Hive Horde mode, where those roaming supers and add clear builds will still come in handy. Since there will be enemies on the other side of the bridge, ranged weapons will become necessary in this encounter, so a Scout Rifle or Sniper Rifle should do the trick. But only a few people on your team would really need to worry about this. When you get to the Death Singer encounter, you will need to swap off of those ad clear builds into something with a little more power. Iryut is handled in much the same way as Kali is in The Last Wish. You'll be damaging her in a close and confined space, so shotguns, swords, and other up-close weapons are going to be preferred. Shotguns will need either one-two punch, trench barrel, or Vorpal. Since you'll be up close and personal, the Tractor Cannon will be a great choice to debuff and weaken Iryut. The Merciless, Fourth Horseman, and the Lament will all be great to use against this boss. There will be Shriekers in this encounter, so you'll want to make sure that someone has a grenade launcher or a rocket launcher to take these down quickly. And then we're left with the final boss encounter versus Crota, but this is not your typical boss fight. Warlocks will want to switch over to Well of Radiance using either Sunbracers, Necrotic Grips, Starfire, or Luna Factions. If you have extra Warlocks, they can use Nova Bomb or Needle Storm. You'll need one Hunter to run Tether, while the rest can use Star Eater Scale with Gathering Storm or Blade Barrage. Titans will want to stick with a Curus Thunder Crash build, but if you're lacking on Warlocks, you may need the benefits of a Titan Bubble. If this encounter is anything like it was in Destiny 1, a Titan Bubble will really come in handy. 
Crota can only be damaged by the Sword of Crota that drops from a sword bearer, but before this can damage him, his overshield must be taken down. The most efficient way of doing this is with a rocket strat. Snipers and linears will work as well, but rockets are going to be the most effective. You'll want one person to have the galley, while the rest of the team uses legendary rockets. The Cold Comfort, Apex Predator, or Hothead are some of the best. You'll need weapon traits like auto reloading, reconstruction, or envious assassin, along with either bait and switch, bipod, or explosive light. Since it can jolt and weaken targets, the two-tailed fox can also be a very viable rocket launcher. Since it has had overwhelming success against the overshields within the Ghost of the Deep, the Arbalist will be another great exotic choice to use against Crota. Since the Wither Horde deals damage over time, this too will be a perfect exotic that someone on your team should be using. Even though rockets will be preferred, the Izanagi's Burden still stands as one of the highest DPSing weapons in Destiny, and it should still prove to be very effective throughout this raid. Taking down Crota's shield requires a lot of burst damage in a small window of time, and there's one exotic weapon that is perfect at providing this. It's literally built for this, the Parasite. This grenade launcher doesn't get a lot of time in the spotlight, at least when it comes to raids. Currently only beneficial in one encounter of the Deepstone Crypt, but against Crota's shield, this exotic is going to slap. Crota's End will be featuring the fan favorite Year 3 armor sets from Destiny 1, along with new versions of 6 legendary weapons, the Fang of Iryut Scout Rifle, the Swordbreaker Shotgun, the Word of Crota Hand Cannon, the Abyss Defiant Auto Rifle, the Oversoul Edic Pulse Rifle, and the Song of Iryut Machine Gun. The Necrochasm will return as the featured exotic, and it will be available as a random drop. Necrochasm will include a catalyst. Obtaining and masterworking this catalyst will feature some throwbacks to the original Necrochasm quest. Crota's End launches this Friday at Daily Reset, with its Day 1 Challenge mode lasting for 24 hours. So Guardians, will you be jumping into this new raid this weekend? Let me know in the comments down below. That's going to wrap things up for today's video on the best weapons and loadouts to use on Day 1 of Crota's End. If you've got any other weapons or loadout suggestions, let us know down below. I'll be leaving a few build links in the description below for you to easily copy and use to your advantage this Friday, but I wish you all the best of luck throughout this new raid. Let me know what you think about the return of Crota and the Year 3 armor, the Necrochasm, and all of those weapons. And let me know your thoughts about the hunger of Crota rocket launcher not returning. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you enjoyed and found it helpful, then be sure to hit that like button below along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel. And until next time, Guardians, this has been Profane wishing you all some happy hunting.